What's up guys, FSC Truck Shop. We had a little problem today. I was out loading Orwell here. That video could be found on FSC Trucking. Anyway, we were out loading today and in the process of dropping my trailer, actually detaching the gooseneck from the trailer and then reattaching, the air system decided to freeze up on me. That kind of creates an issue because, well, to put alcohol in the system over the compressor and have it go down to the air dryer, um, that's not able to be done with the cab down. And uh, the other problem is the hydraulics that froze on the cab to try to jack it up. So what I wound up doing was crawling underneath the truck and I poured alcohol in the feed line from the compressor to the dryer. That didn't solve the problem. So then it was sitting there hissing like a t -t 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 as it was running. So I was kind of thinking, this is more of a governor problem. That feed line, I don't know exactly how it works, there's that small tube that goes from the bottom of the air dryer up to the governor, and that's what sets your unloader valve to start allowing it to start adding air to the truck. Well, it was hissing out the bottom of the truck, out of the dryer. It's an AD9 dryer, and that's in the frame rails by the drive shaft behind a transmission. Anyway, so what I wound up doing is I tried to put some alcohol in the feed line from the compressor to the dryer, that didn't do anything. I'm like, okay, that's not helping. I'm thinking this is more of like a governor problem. It's building up some, but not enough air pressure. So my answer to that point was, let me try to send some ice. Let me try to send some uh, alcohol up that small line uphill, up into the uh, governor itself, which I did. That solved the problem, but it was still hissing a little bit as I drove farther and it cleared out over time, but it's still 14 degrees outside right now and it's getting dark, so I think it's gonna get around zero tonight. And then uh, in the morning we're supposed to, because we are loaded now, I may managed to make it back. So I came home, dropped the truck off, let it thaw, went up to go get a new dryer and a new governor. So I figured, let me just go ahead and replace them both. Admittingly, I should have already changed out the dryer or at least a cartridge inside it, but I didn't, so I kind of got I kind of got caught with my pants down on that one, but that wasn't the problem. I think it's the governor. Now, I'm starting to debate on whether I should start changing out these governors yearly right before winter hits. Anyway, um, this governor was replaced, I really don't know how long ago, um, to be honest. So, it's probably a year to, it's at least two years, to, at least. So, either way, governors are cheap. It was like $74. It used to be like $30. Now, they're like... 70 but anyway i got a governor got a dryer let's uh go ahead and start jacking up the cab uh, hopefully it's thawed it's been in here for a couple hours so it should be ready to go if not we can start on the dryer but with that let me get the cab let me let me get jacking on the cab and get it up that sounded terrible Alrighty, boys and girls i got the cab jacked up so now what i'm trying to show you here is this is the governor this is the part that went bad here so uh, the way it works is the air compressor is right here. It's a twin piston. It runs continuously. There's an unloader valve up inside the head here. Now that's controlled by air signals sent by the air dryer in the back. That is either this line here or this line here. One of the two. I'm not really sure. They're both plumbed together. Either way, this is what sets the unloader to either start pumping air into here or just bleeding it out. Air comes in here, pre-pressurized from the turbo. This is the intake, pressurized. Comes in here, and then it pressurizes it and sends it out the stainless line down to the air dryer. Basically how it works. This here is what controls it, and I think this is what went bad on me. So, what I gotta do is just start taking this apart. It's real simple, not a big deal, but nonetheless, here we are. Now, one of the cool parts about changing these is when you do in a hurry, the lines basically kind of tell you right where they go. Those are half inch lines, all right. Bolts are half inch. So what we'll do is we'll take the air hoses off first. Now 
Now this line comes from the air tanks. Okay, so this one here I just took off comes from the AD9 dryer. This one comes off the air tank. So as soon as I pull this, we're just gonna lose all our air. Now this bolt here also holds the clamp that holds that stainless tube stationary. The bolts go through the entire body of the governor. It's right there, I'll slide this down and out of the way. It's one bolt. And then the second bolt pulls the governor off the rest of the way. So now, I did notice they, at Truck Equipment, they had a more updated style of governor. It has a, a blue cap rather than a black cap. I It said it would work with an AD9, but the plumbing looked identical but you'd have to move the pipe plugs i don't know if somebody tried to use them or if the pack was missing the new pack comes with new pipe plugs i'll show you here shortly but they did have the old style one so it's either an old style one or the guy messed up and tried to sell me the wrong one but i do have the exact direct replacement of this there you go there is a gasket that goes between the governor and the compressor itself it's right here. I'll have to get a scraper and pop it off there. All right, it's removed. Now all we have to do is duplicate this setup on the new one. Here is our old governor, obviously. I'll put this bolt over here. The other one, so I'll lose it. See the angles of the tube? You're going to want to try to do that basically identical with the new one. Let's unbox the new one. Part number on the new one is 275491N. Made by Bendix. There's our brand new governor. In the kit comes with brand new governor and a gasket and four pipe plugs. I'll lose the gasket. What you need is an Allen wrench for these pipe plugs. Oh, and these even come with Teflon on the threads already. The pipe plugs are 3 16 Allen key. So right there, notice something right here. There's a port right there. That port's plugged up. We have to cap that one. So put the pipe plug on. Allen key, double check, yep. Thread them in. These are kind of universal. They go into many different trucks, many different configurations, so. it done all right next one look on the bottom look at the belly of the beast right here there's your there's your uh hose attachment plugged and plugged open open again take the plug drop them in and sink them down And repeat. Okay. The other side. Other side. Open, open. Obviously, this is where the gasket goes. Close, open, close. Here's your last pipe plug. Excellent. All right, next, have to do is mark or notice, notate where the direction that nipple is. So it's basically at a 45, not pointed quite to the corner, but just a touch over. Matter of fact, it points right to that notch right there. Well, take your half inch wrench, spin them out. I'm gonna put new, I'm gonna put new thread tape on here though, so stand by. Got our Teflon tape. My dad always taught me how to do it. 
You want to put it in a direction as if you're tightening. That way it doesn't peel the end off of it. Now personally, I do know that they make Teflon, like you brush it on and then put the part on. Uh, but I've seen that stuff fail more times than not. So I don't like the stuff personally. Maybe it's just not being used right. I've never used it. But mechanics that have worked on my stuff have used it. And it's often failed. Plus it's goopy and pain in the ass to get apart. So put some Teflon on it. Done. Funny story. My mother, when my mother and father first got together, my mother didn't realize the Teflon tape doesn't have sticky to it. So she threw a bunch out. Told my dad about it because, as she said, Jim, I threw it all away. It was no good. There's no sticky to the tape. Um, he didn't find it too funny, but I guess he was able to get it all out of the trash. But it's just one of those funny stories. Well, don't worry. That happened probably, shoot, 50-some years ago. 50, 53 years ago. And they still get a laugh about it. That's important. Laugh at crap like that, right? All right, we're gonna go one more round. Perfect, right there. Point right at that notch. Next one. See this corner here? Points to that hole. Corner points to the hole or the end points to the corner here either way basically that angle is how we're trying to duplicate it pull them off now it's probably a good idea to have a spare one of these in your truck thing is when they go out they're cold so if you got a cab over with moisture in your cab oil um, you might have a problem probably wouldn't be a bad idea to get a spare one of these and then put new fittings on there. That way I don't have to do this in the cold. I could just switch them out because the fittings are already pre-loaded. Uh, pre would be a bad idea to try to get this old thread tape off. Just be patient, it'll come off. I mean, if it don't come off, it's not the end of the world. Alrighty, boys and girls, I got thread tape off, so now I got to put more thread tape on. It was funny, off camera for a little bit, it's been about 30 minutes since the last scene, I uh, got a call from my dad, I wanted to see how the hell we were doing. And I was telling him what I was doing, and I was just talking to him about thread tape. So, <laughs> uh, the irony. That's cool, good to hear from him. He was in his... He was in his truck driving to go Home Depot, go get some block. He's putting up a shed at the house. He may actually be buying a trike, you know, a Harley Davidson trike. That'd be cool. That would be nice if he did, actually. All right, back to what I was saying earlier. Put, thread this on in. Well, hopefully, I remember the angle. right like that excellent now I put it in alrighty brought my little hook that I was using for the thread tape see about getting this gasket out of here oh you're gonna make me get the wheel ain't you yeah you are make me get the wheel Time to install it now. Take your gasket, place it right there like so. The back bolt goes in first, like that. Get it up in there. Right there yet. Yeah. 
you get the next one goes through the clamp that holds the stainless from vibrating. So you know, make sure to make sure the uh, gasket's lined up right. Send it on in. Excellent. Done. Now, I'm just going to hook up your lines back to it. So this one, I don't know if you boys and girls can see that or not, but that one goes right there. There we go. I changed the angle on the other one slightly. Beauties. Alright. Alright boys and girls, governor's in. Now for the air dryer. Oh, I cleaned the floor up my back. Nice. Alrighty boys and girls, usually I film all this stuff, but I left my GoPros inside in the trunk. Oops. Well, you just kind of take my word for what I'm doing down here. There's a heater plug I'm disconnecting. I ground it to the case that holds it all together. So that's pulled, the ground. Put that over there. Like that. Now I have to start taking air hoses off. So now we'll start pulling air hoses. I could have probably put the camera down here. I'll put the camera down here when I put it back in. That's the line that comes out of the, or to the tank, air tanks. Taking the line off, it's still full of alcohol, or it's dripping a little bit of alcohol. That line comes from the compressor. And there's the signal line. Go use nine sixteenths, not the half inch. Then there's the signal line going to the compressor from here, or to the governor, I should say. It tells the unloader what to do. Alright, it's disconnected. Put out the hall drip. Now the wrenches, the impacts. They five eighths, they look five eighths. No, they're nine sixteenths. Also, okay.
Alrighty, boys and girls, here you go. Here's your air dryer. It sits up like this. This is the part when you're driving down the road and it tanks are full. That's the part that goes psh, right out of here. That plug right there is a heater. It gets cold, that heats up so the water don't freeze. If it does, you'll blow your line and it goes, it feeds this thing. So, gotta be careful, don't do that. It's in, unloader, out. First, we have to take the brackets off of it so that I can mount this on the new one. So, let's go ahead and get that done now. Now, this top part here simply clamps with a 9 16th bolt. And it slides off like so. Bottom one, very slightly more complicated. Like I said, very slightly more complicated. There we go. All right, now, let's set this here for the time being. And I'll tell you what, if I ever do put a... I'll move. If I ever do put a nicer fender on here, I can't be using it anymore for a workbench, that's for sure. And see the hat starting to rust? So, that's getting long in the tooth. Now when you buy an 89 dryer, they come with no mounting bracket and no governor. You have to add them. They'd have no idea what you're going to put it on or how. The mounting kit does come separately. Voila, there we go. Brand new AD9 air dryer. So now, what you have to do is figure the clock position that's going to be mounted on the truck so that you know where to put your brackets. Notice the slightly longer bolts that comes with the kit. That's for that bracket. At least they thought ahead on that one. So, lay this greasy globby mess down. Like so. See the clock position right there? That's where the mounting bracket's going to go. You can mount the bracket any way you want. The way we're going to mount it is like that. That's how it was. So, with that, let's get the same thing done. Lay them over. Exact same position. Take your 9 16 wrench and your impact. All right, take your impact and your 9 16 wrench, take these two off. Put your longer, well, they do give you flat washers and lock washers, okay. Or flats on both sides. Flats on both sides, all right. So you put your flat washer, bolt, flat washer. These are nylocks, nylon um, embossed nuts so they don't vibrate loose. 
just start threading them in. Take the next one. Flat washer. And nut. Uh, send it home. That's that. Now, the top one you could put on after you put the bottom one in. You could slide the cap on it and then bolt it down to the truck. We're done with that for now. So, next is we have to now look, notice the angles that these are and then replace them as they are. These two face basically straight down. This one at an angle. Although this one I can install easy with it mounted on a truck. This one I'll probably do right here. To make sure because I'm trying to remember the exact way we put it on but just to be sure I'm just going to thread them in kind of loosely even so there's you know I can adjust these once I'm under there because honestly I moved both of them around and I forgot which direction they point <laughs> sorry but it's God's honest truth on that one alrighty boys and girls so now I'm under the truck this is the bracket that it's factory believe it or not that bracket there was a different style air dryer on this truck when I bought it but I converted it to a more modern one well modern for me
Alrighty, it's mounted. Oh crap, I need that bag anyway. Alright, so. These are 180 out. I gotta twist them. To me. I left them loose so I could tighten them. Excellent. Okay, it's a little line for the unloader or signal or whatever you want to call it. Goes to the governor. Put him down. Now I'm attaching the line to the air tanks. Good. I'm gonna back one of these other bolts out to attach the ground wire. Ground plug back up. I'll drop it on my head. Oh. 
done. Lastly, plug in the heater power cord and we're good. Clear tools. Clear me. And then I gotta somehow fish the camera out of there. Alright, let's set the big girl back down and fire her up. Let's do an air up. Back it down to about 90, it recovered, came back up, popped off again at 120. That's good, that's done. She's fixed. All right, so that probably I should have done that before it got this cold, but nonetheless, here we are, it's done now. A little bit of alcohol unfroze it on the road. Uh, it was the governor, I'm pretty sure it was frozen, not the dryer, but nonetheless, the dryer's getting long in the tooth and it's just getting on time to go. This is the first cold snap of the year. I really don't need to be messing with that kind of temperatures and not have the truck ready to go. So with that, uh, I think the dryer was like 100, 100 to like 60, $180, somewhere in that range. And uh, the governor is like 70 bucks. So that's it, that's how we've got it done. So with that, I'm gonna close it up, call it a day. Got the Pemi Island, it's time to get up, get uh, cleaned up, get out of here. <laughs>